my part is really around ensuring we have everything we need so that the focus always remains on the performance on the court and that all the arrangements off the court run smoothly. Dealing with the athletes I see as one of the privileges of the role. Yes, it can be very difficult at times because often than some of them are going through some pretty difficult things behind the scenes or their families are struggling with different things, but it also, there's huge positives to it. Over time, it's about building trust and relationships, uh, knowing that you've got their back and that you'll always be there for them. So, the Malloy family, there's myself, my husband Stu, we've got two daughters. There's Charlotte who is recently turned eight and we've got Summer, our little live wire, who is five. Being in a job where you travel a number of days of the year uh, away from home is challenging. A lot of planning goes into not only the team but the family, the other team, my other team, Team Malloy. We have a lot of planning going on uh, to make sure that they have everything they need. I have an amazing husband and Stu. He just takes it on, all of it, as well as working full time himself. So very, very lucky to have Super Dad at home. Things started to unfold for Team Malloy, I think, uh, back in 2016. Charlotte just all of a sudden started to sort of say she had sore legs. She's a very outgoing go-getter kid into her sport, playing outside, climbing trees. We just thought that was that and she'd just done too much, so we kind of left it. Then she started saying, I can't bend down and pick anything up off the ground. So obviously alarm bells are starting to, to go off. Things escalated quite quickly and all of a sudden she was just complaining of sore muscles everywhere, um, achy, like really upset about it and um, I do recall a day at daycare when they called me and said you need to come and pick her up, she can't lift her arms and her, and her fingers look like sausages, all of a sudden she had these really swollen hands. That was the start of heading to Starship, being admitted to A&E having a whole lot of doctors come at her, they weren't sure what was wrong, thought she had a neurological issue, heaps and heaps of tests. Um, and where we got to was that she had a really unusual, uh, very rare uh, illness, autoimmune illness, called juvenile dermatomyositis. It was a juvenile illness that, um, that largely kids came out the other side of um, with quite a, you know, a shortish period of time. So me being the optimist that I am and the glass half full, I was like, oh yeah, that's good, all right, we got this, team always got this, a few days in hospital, not that keen on all the steroids, but that's what they said had to be done, so that's what we did, and then it was, we were gonna be off and Charlotte was gonna be the same Charlotte again, and off we went. Little did you know that wasn't quite the case. <laughs> First year was a lot of learning, a lot of managing, a lot of pain, trying to keep life as normal as possible for her. And I guess again that optimist in me was like, this is a bit longer than what they thought, but it's all good, we'll, we're going to come out the other side, we'll be fine. So yeah, we just carried on. She was actually completely weaned off her steroids altogether by around Easter of 2018 and all the signs were that she was largely heading into sort of a remission type situation where she didn't have the inflammation and I was like yes this is it we're pushing on out. Almost weeks not even weeks after that Easter holiday she started to get she went downhill really quickly and started to get really sick and then we headed into what I sort of call as like phase two of her illness and that was ten times worse than the first year. Unfortunately, one of the cruel side effects of her illness is developing calcinosis, which is like 
misdeposited calcium all around your body under the skin which is like little rocks really painful because um, it, it's everywhere it was incredibly disheartening for us because we knew that things were not going to get better and it's very hard to tell uh, your little girl that thinks she's coming out the other side that actually probably on a bit of a rocky road this time What I love about Starship is that it's a child-centred uh, model and so that every doctor talks to the child before they talk to the parents and so the child is always the centre and most important piece of the puzzle and I love that about it but when your specialist rings you and says we need to have a meeting with you and Stu, don't bring Charlotte, I think you know that there's a problem and so I think probably our lowest point in this has been going in to sit in a room and be told that your specialist has sleepless nights over your daughter and that they um, don't know what to do and yeah that she yeah she wants to help her but she's not too sure what to do um, and that she's asking the world for help at that point and they're giving as much advice as they can but nothing seems to be working I think that's a pretty low point to be told if your daughter gets a common cold, there's a possibility she wouldn't have the strength to fight it. Slowly but surely she started to lose her ability to walk and I think that was probably a really low point for me too because I guess the optimist in me was, I didn't want anything to, you know, I guess a sick child is one thing but a sick child that loses their ability to walk, I guess the outgoing kid and the, the outgoing family that we are. To have your child losing the ability to walk was probably one of the cruelest blows to me because I just knew she was, that was a cruel blow to her. I never stopped believing that there was something that would help her and that we could fix this. And so I spent hours and hours reading into the night and um, I stumbled across some kids overseas that had had bone marrow or stem cells transplants. It was kind of like a light bulb moment because I read that some of them were incredibly unwell. And at that point, Charlotte was incredibly unwell too. I felt like I was reading a case about her when I was reading a case about a child overseas, all the same symptoms really crippled by this horrible illness, um, had had a stem cell transplant and largely two, three late years later was living a normal life. I said I've read that you can get a stem cell transplant, you know, kids with, with JDM have had stem cell transplants and my specialist said, she, our, our specialist, child specialist said, yeah, I know. And I went, what? When were we going to discuss this? When were we going to table this idea? And she said, I didn't want to tell you until I had all my ducks in a row. I need to introduce you to Dr. Tim Prestige, who's one of the oncology team at Starship. He's very interested to meet her. And I went, yeah, well, let's meet this guy. So then we met Dr. Tim, as we like to call him. Very funny man, as well as a very good doctor. Very good with the kids. Um, Charlotte loved him the second she met him. He loved Charlotte. Um, and he, he turned around and said, I think, I think I can do something that's going to make a difference. He then uh, happened to be going to a conference in Europe where some of the doctors from Holland who had done the successful transplants on other children happened to be, um, happened to be attending. So he called a meeting with them, went and met with them, sat around a table, learned everything there was to learn about what they did to, with their transplant uh, to try and help these kids and then what happened post the transplant. They admit you and they destroy any sense of immune system you have left with lots of horrible drugs, chemo, um, and then when you have absolutely nothing left, uh, that's when the amazing gold comes back, those beautiful cells that you harvested um, they hang them up and then they start um, infusing those beautiful cells back into your bloodstream and that's, um, 
that's basically day zero of when Charlotte got a new immune system. We'd wiped out the old one, the one that had gone bad on us that we didn't like anymore. Um, and then we just waited and hoped. I recall being 36 weeks pregnant with her, still on tour, waddling myself around New Zealand on a test series. Um, and so she's part and parcel sort of of the Silver Ferns environment. Hi Charlie, we miss you so much. I wish you could come and hang out with me right. Oh, and Laura. Right in the middle here, we can have snugs like we used to on tour. Can't wait for you to get better so we can do that. Keep doing what you're doing Charlie, you're kicking ass. We hope that you have a really good day today and things start picking up for you. You're constantly in our thoughts and we hope you're doing well. We know you've been so brave, um, such a strong little bugger in there, so we just are wishing you all the best and we love you so much. Welcome back, you're on awesome. Hi girls, good luck on your game. Thanks for the cool videos. Me and Mum will be watching you. Team Silver Ferns, go girls, yes. In my head, I've always felt like I have a very stubborn daughter and it was like when nothing was working, it was like there was a door you couldn't unlock and we just didn't have the right key and we couldn't find the right key and it used to piss me off that we didn't have the right key and it just used to be the way I would try to comprehend it all and I just used to wish that she would channel her stubbornness into trying to heal rather than fight against everything and I felt like um, by having the transplant in my head we knocked that, that door down and all of a sudden these little builders could come in and rebuild the city and then she got to um, have this amazing second chance. We're now over 12 months since she had her transplant and completely illness free, which is it's taken me a long time to um, feel like I could even say that because the fear of it returning is massive and it sits back here and you don't even want to say it because I didn't want to jinx it. I thought if I said it, then it had almost come back. bravery and courage that her medical team took to allow us to have the transplant ultimately saved her life and I don't, it's such a hard thing to put into words, how do you thank the people that took a chance on your daughter and thought she deserved better and all I think is the many times Tim told me I think I can make a difference on her future and I think this kid deserves better. And of course we 100% thought she could do, she deserved better, she was our kid, we didn't want to see her in pain but to find a way to thank the people that do this for a daily job and don't see it as a big deal but absolutely changed the course of our family's life um, is very, very hard to put into words.